It's me, it's me, it's Brandon T. And welcome back to another episode of Painting with Magic. On this episode, I'm going to go over how to make your own stretched canvases. These canvases are very high quality, but only cost you very little money. Um, I've used many, many canvases, uh, cheap to a little more expensive, and these beat them every single time. They're very worth your time to make them because they make very professional, very high quality canvases. So, I was stretching some canvases today. I thought I'd go ahead and make a video because we had so many questions on it. So let's go ahead and look at the tools and stuff you're going to need to make your own canvases. Okay, so what I have down here is I have a frame already made. And we'll have a video going over how to make your own frames. But this is just three quarter of an inch of pine and stapled on each uh, corner on 45 degree angles. About eight staples on each corner. Okay. Then I have a staple gun. You can use a uh, manual staple gun. I got an electric staple gun here. Uh, it's a lot easier. If you're going to make a lot of uh, canvases, this here will really speed up the process and be a lot easier on you. I have 5 sixteenths of an inch staples, 8 millimeter staples. You're going to need that size. Okay. Uh, some scissors to cut your canvas with, and we'll go over the canvas that I use uh, here real soon. You're going to need a, a drywall sand a sander to like a screen sander. For like drywall, you'll find that in your drywall section of your hardware store. This is what very important to have. You're going to need some canvas sealer. This is my signature canvas sealer. This will be on the market soon. Probably a different, little bit different packaging. It will have the label on it. Uh, but this is a white canvas sealer. Okay. You're going to need some of this. Um, you're going to need the canvas. This is a canvas drop cloth uh, from the hardware store. Okay. So you go to your hardware store. Your local hardware store should have this. It's a canvas drop cloth. 100% cotton canvas drop cloth. I've already cut it, pre-cut it to the size I want it. But you can see the front and the back is the same. Make sure when you buy your uh, canvas drop cloth, it should be where the tarps are at in the hardware section, in your hardware store. Uh, and you get it. It's, this is about 8 ounce, 10 ounce uh, cotton canvas. It's a very heavy duty canvas. And it works very, very good. I really love this stuff. It's very heavy. Um, and it works really good for texture. You get a lot of tooth out of this. That's what I like. You're also going to need an old raggedy old brush. Something that you really don't care about. Because um, when we coat this with our sealer, um, you know, you're going to have to wash it with water and stuff. So uh, I'm just going to use an old brush here. It's an old rag brush. Something I really don't care about. And we're going to use it to coat our canvas with. Okay, so, and you're going to need some scissors to cut your tarp, your drop cloth with your canvas drop cloth. So I'm going to go ahead and get situated here and we'll be right back to start uh, stretching this canvas. Okay, let's go over how to stretch your canvas. Now I got the canvas drop cloth on the table. You can see I got the top on the table. Now this, both sides are relatively the same. One side might be just a little bit smoother than the other. So I'm going to use the smoother side on the front side of the canvas. So what you do is you just flip it upside down and this side will be the back, and this side will be the front. But it really doesn't matter. This side's a little more smoother than the other. So just check it out to what you like. Then we'll take the canvas frame that we made. And again, we're going to have a video on how to make your own frames really soon. Okay, lay it down there. Just kind of check to see if you are able to grip it to stretch your canvas. Okay, now here's what I do. I don't use canvas pliers. You can use regular pliers if you want to, but I don't normally do that. I'm just going to grab it here. <clears throat> take the staple gun, use a lot of pressure on it, and, and staple it down like that. Okay? Then on the other side, give it some pull, some tension, and staple her down. Now sometimes they don't go all the way down like that, so we can just hammer them down. I usually have a hammer here, a mallet. You may need a mallet to hammer some of these down sometimes. So that's what you want to do anyways after you've done stable them all. Then I'd go on this side now. Give it a nice pull. So I grab it on this way. I got my fingers on the bar of this other frame and my thumbs on this. And I'm pulling it really tight. Then I grab it. Lower it down. And staple it. You can see the staple on that. Okay. And we're going on the other side. It's kind of like tuning a drum. When you're tuning a drum you want each opposite of the kegs. Okay, and give it a nice big pull. Really give it some muscle there to pull it. You want this to be as tight as you can possibly get it. You can take it and staple it down. Okay, 
and you want to repeat this process until you get to about about right here so maybe about an inch or two from the corner and we'll be right back after I get these stapled here then we'll show you how to start doing the corners okay now as you're stapling your canvas um, I've already got this one over here stapled you can see this whole line stapled now in the middle here you probably can't see that right here in the middle of this right here we want to go on each side so what I'm going to do here I'm going to pull one side of the side of the staple and then put it right to the middle of the table staple it and pull this side here try to make sure you can see all this okay now you can see here it has some some lag here now I'll give it a nice pull and give it another staple okay and you want to do this for both sides all the sides say you want to start your stapling your staples out okay and you can just go from either side this way however you want to start doing it but make sure your middles on every one of your corner on one of your sides all four sides is like this when you start okay so we'll be right back when we come back we'll do the the corner fold okay so now we got our bag with our staples all in it on all four sides have our staples see this side's got them in there so we left some room on all the sides we left some room so we can fold our corners now on this side here you can see it's a natural colored canvas and we have a bounce see, it's very tight okay now to make your folds now this is something that um, can be tricky when you first start uh, but if you watch this video it should be a lot easier for you what I normally do is I take and fold one in straight in leave it alone and open one gap open and start tucking this one in then you can raise it up but what I normally do is I cut it so it makes it a lot neater so what I normally do here is I take it you see how I got it open I fold it back and right on the edge of this bar here that's where I want to start cutting this side of the canvas so make sure we get it nice a better pair of scissors would be better okay but it's good enough okay now you see I got it cut and then I take and I cut this side okay then I fold it in okay 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 so we got this cut we cut it straight across then we cut this little piece off so get this little scrap piece save your little scrap pieces because if you get a tear in your canvas you can use this to repair your canvas with okay and that will be something for another video how to repair your canvas is the right way so save your little scraps it's always awesome when you do this you have your little scraps okay then you want to take this and then fold this corner in and there should have a little bit of a pocket here if you can see a little pocket here when you're folding and try to stuff it down into that pocket okay so I'm stuffing it into the pocket and then when you raise it up give it a very big pull and then staple it staple a little corner okay so I'm stapling those corners okay and then we'll look at the corner itself the very professional corner like you would buy at the store looks very nice okay that's how you do those corners very professionally you want to cut those you have a nice corner now if you don't want to cut those um, it's gonna be very thick and blotchy not blotchy but very thick lump now, I'm not gonna staple this way but I'm gonna show you if it did look staple what it would do instead of cutting it you would just fold this in and bring it up and you can see how it's got like a knot up here it has a knot this end is smooth so it's gonna go into a frame really easy if you don't cut it you're gonna have a lump and it's gonna be very hard to get into a frame 
So make sure you always cut it. So you can fold it in there and it'll give you a little crease to where you can cut at. Okay, and then remember you cut this, fold it over, and then cut that out. A little square extra piece. And you want to do this for all four sides. Basically, you just now you just fold this end in into the little pocket. And we can we can staple this too before we start stapling the other parts. Then bring it up and staple. Then bring it up and staple it. Okay, very nice and professional corner. Now you see there's a little bit of a frame show in there, but that's no problem. Uh, that's when you cut it. Sometimes you might cut it a little short, but that's no problem. When you, you can cut this with gesso and it'll be disappear, but there's no problem with that. It's do this for all four corners. And then when we come back, we'll show you how to coat your canvas with some canvas sealer. Okay, so now we're going to coat this canvas with some canvas sealer. Now, if you don't have canvas sealer, you can use uh, some white gessos or certain types of gessos that you got to use. Uh, this one here is, is one that I formulated for this, and it's really a great product. So we're going to use this one here. It should be on the market soon. But what I've done here is I got these other tools out here because I want to show you what I've done. And on the back here, I just went ahead and I trimmed the excess off. Now you can use scissors. Or you can use a razor blade. Either one of those two tools will work good or, or side by side. Because you're going to get some of these little stringies here too. See those little stringies? Uh, you can just snap them off uh, with some scissors or something. We can cut this piece off here. Uh, this doesn't really matter. It's just, you know, a matter of looks. You can even coat this here part with some of that gesso if you want to. Or canvas primer. And uh, it will keep this here part here pretty good. But, okay, now we're going to use an old raggedy old brush. If you don't want to use nothing new, uh, maybe something that a uh, brush you don't really like or something, you can use that. So we're going to use this one here. I'm going to take this here and I'm going to shake it up really good. You guys want to shake them up. And your first part will take a lot. So let's get a little bit of time. Just kind of throw it out of the your bottle. Okay. And then we're going to coat it. Now this is going to suck up a lot of it because it's not prim primed yet. And you want to give very firm pushes. So really push it into the grain of this canvas, into the knit. Really push it in there firm. Okay. And you don't have to even coat the sides if you don't want to. Really get it in there. A little bit right here. Just really coat this canvas really, really good. <clears throat> now this is a liquid formula, so be careful not to spray it all over you. You scrub it in. And again, it'll take quite a bit because this is your first part. It's going to really suck it up, kind of like whenever you're putting a clear coat on some wood. The first coat will dry quicker and it will suck it right up. A little bit more. Okay. Just keep a coating it until it's all done. Now, it, if you want to do two coats, double primed canvas. Okay, if you're not using a double prime, your, your medias will get just sucked right out of the canvas and you won't have no blending time. Okay, we're almost done coating this one for the first coat anyway. Now you want to make sure you don't see no little holes in this, meaning it's little, I'm going to coat this right here. 
Okay, you can see these little holes, if you can see that. Make sure you make sure those are all filled in. Really fill it in. That's why I said pour a lot on it. Don't be stingy with it. Really pour a lot on there. Okay. And we need a little bit more. Just add a little bit more to it. Okay. Oh, got some on me there. Could have a paper towels handy. Now, see a little bit of a, a couple of those little holes over here. This is your best chance of seeing all the little holes is your first coat. Now let's go back and forth with it, horizontal and vertical strokes. Make sure it's kind of even. And this first coat will dry very quickly. I just use a hair dryer or you can just let it sit and do that. Now you can coat the sides if you like to. I usually do this after this one's dry and then I go around it and coat those and let it dry. You just do one coat. So we'll let this dry and we'll be right back to put our second coat on there. Okay, now we're on step four, three, I don't know which one it is yet, but this is time after we coat it the first time, uh, we're going to use our sander. This is a, like I said, it's a mesh sander that you're going to get from your hardware store where you go get your drop cloth from in the drywall section. It's a very fine grain, probably about 250 or so grain. So what we're going to do is after you've coated this with your canvas sealer, you're going to see some of the fibers have lifted up on this, okay? I'm not sure if you can pick it up on the camera or not, but there is some fibers on this, okay? And this sand is going to get them off. And we're not going to use any pressure on this. We're just going to go across it. See all that stuff coming out here? It's going to be black because this is a black sandpaper type of deal. But it's getting rid of all those hard fibers. I'm not even going to need pressure on this. Okay, I'm not even going to need pressure on this. Now, it may seem like I got pressure on it, but I do not have any pressure on this canvas. Just let it kind of do its thing. Can they kind of use your hand to fill around, see if there's any fibers that's lifted up on it, and you can kind of detail it there. I like to get the edges, the corners. Kind of rounds it all off. Makes it nice and smooth all the way around. Now I'm going to go check for fibers. There's a couple over here. Just kind of check and see what you like. Now the smoother the canvas you want, the more coats you want of the, of the sealer. Kind of just kind of checking. Here seems like a little bit rough. Here's a little rough. Kind of like to make sure it's smooth. Usually your, your 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 bars areas will be a lot more rougher. This is the part where you really want to make sure everything's smooth. Okay. And after you've done your sanding, just kind of dust it off. Uh, if you have an air compressor, you can hit it with that. But I just use my hand and wipe it all off, wipe the table off. Okay. Now I kind of check the back of my hand and see what I like. I mean, there's some spots still that's a little bit uh, high on it that I want to get. Kind of check the back of your hand and see. Some over here still. 
Just do this until you feel comfortable uh, uh, with it. Okay? So, um, we're ready to coat it again with a second coat. Okay? And you swap it off with a towel to get any dust off of it. Okay? Now it's very clean surface. Okay, I'm gonna grab my brush. I just kind of dipped it in water to keep it wet and moist while that dried. I use a hair dryer to dry that with. Now I'm ready to go for my second coat. Okay? So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna shake the bottle again. Make sure each time you shake your bottle really well. Okay? Then this coat here ain't gonna take as much. So let's kind of put a little bit at a time on this coat. You're going to see it get a lot brighter. See it's getting a lot brighter now. And this, after this one's dry, she's ready to paint with. So make sure we get this nice and uh, coated. The first coat pretty much sealed it. The second coat's going to seal it even more. Uh, you can put as many coats as you would like of this on your canvas. Now this is canvas sealer. We have something called black gesso on our site that um, will go on a already primed canvas. So after you've got a primed canvas or if you went and bought a canvas you can use that on top of it. These are two different formulas of mediums here for your canvases, your paintings. Uh, we will have a black canvas sealer too coming soon. Uh, if you want to go ahead and prime your canvas with a black. But I'm going to go ahead and get this one coated. And I'll be right back after I get this all coated up. I don't want to take too much of your time. So after I get this all coated, uh, we'll come back and then we'll dry it and she'll be completed. Full cross. Okay, so now we, we've, we've made our canvas. We've stretched our canvas onto our frame we, that you made or you could have bought frames. Um, we stapled it to it. We coated it with our canvas sealer. Dried it, sanded it, coated it again, and dried it. Now, after you've done this, it will be, have some nice texture to it. More, more of a uh, rougher tooth to the canvas. Now, I'm like a rough tooth for uh, mountain paintings because you get a lot more breakages in your mountains. But if you want yours to be a little more smoother, you can give it one more hit from with your sander. A very light, no, no pressure on this at all. Just let it barely go over your canvas to knock down any grain that you don't want. And you kind of feel that. Uh, and if you want to, you can give it some more sanding and coat it again and make an even finer tooth. But for the most part, whenever I do my mountain paintings, I like a very nice tooth to this. Right now it's probably at a middle tooth. Right now after we send it it's about at, at your standard packages you get when you buy canvases. If you sand it down. Again no pressure. It's going to sound like I got a lot of pressure on this because of the mics and stuff. There's no pressure. Okay that canvas is perfect. You're going to see some, we can see some, no, there's no dust on it, but we will dust it down anyway. For your paint, you always want to give it a nice dusting. And she is ready to go, ready to be painted on. Now, you can see I did not coat the signs of this canvas. Now, you can coat that if you want. Uh, but the reason I didn't coat it for, because sometimes I like that look on my canvases. Um, it comes like that stuff that's going around now, it's in some kind of style going around um, with this kind of look on your canvases. Um, but you can coat that if you want to. Um, I may coat this, I may not coat this. But whatever you want to do, it's up to you. It's your own canvas. You can make it in any sizes, um, about any shape you want. Um, so, uh, if you don't like stretch canvases, you can make your own panels by um, um, gluing these to some masonite board. You can just glue it right to it and cut them, and, or cut them and, and glue them to it. So, whatever you want to do. So I hope you enjoyed this little video uh, for more tips 
and tricks, uh, contact me at brandonthomasart.com. For art supplies, visit brandonthomasart.com and brandonthomasartsupply.com. You'll be able to pick up the Magic Brush Kit, the Painting with Magic Deluxe Kit, and you should be able to pick up our new canvas sealer. It should be on there. Uh, if not, keep checking it. If you're watching this video later on, it should be on the site. Um, and you'll be able to put your amazing white medium on this or your amazing clear and start painting immediately. Right after you got it all dried and sand it down one more time. And you got a perfect canvas, a very thick canvas. You can see some of the primer that's went through here. It's going to even seal it even more. And you got a perfect canvas. Now you can even spray the back of this if you want even more. Uh, tighter you can just spray it like you would standardly spray your canvases and then spray the corners and just let it sit and it will be it will be a lot tighter so this is a very high quality canvas the best canvases I've ever used honestly and they are very cheap to make yourself so go to your local hardware store canvas drop cloth about eight or ten ounces and pick up your um, little sander there at the store get you an old brush that you don't really care about and just coat your canvas with your uh, sealer your amazing sealer and uh, we'll see you real soon don't forget to check out our website it's linked below to everything we'll see you real soon